Hey everybody, welcome to Salesforce in Under 5, and today we're going to be talking about how to write Apex classes and triggers following best practices. Now, there are many best practices when it comes to writing Apex, and you can do the research and go on Google and, and see there's a lot of opinions about best practices. And ultimately, they come down to different design considerations, how to manage governor limits, make sure you're not running over on governor limits, simplifying your code, making sure you're not doing um, perhaps uh, multiple lines of, of Apex that can be simplified down to one. Um, there's a great blog called Apex Best Practices, the 15 Apex Commandments, and I'll link this in the description. So in this video, I'm gonna focus um, on what I think will likely be the three, or I'll distill it down to three best practices that I think the exam will most likely touch on. And those are avoiding DML and SQL in loops, keeping your logic outside of triggers by using handlers and helpers, and also making sure you're bulkifying. DML and SQL in loops. So, Putting DML within a loop is a sure way to exceed your governor limits because you're iterating over an unknown collection size often times. Um, unless you know that you're only going to iterate over something 10 times or 20 times, maybe, maybe it would be okay, uh, but I would still avoid it. So instead, a best practice would be to add your item to a collection which there is no cost for and insert the list after. And this is specifically for DML. So let's take a look at some code. You can see in this code here, I have a for loop for opportunities and I'm iterating through an opportunity list called op list. And I'm going ahead and uh, change the stage to new prospecting. And I'm just gonna update the opportunity right then and there. So if there's 500 opportunities in that list, a thousand opportunities in that list, one opportunity in that list, I'm going to be doing equal amount of updates. And we know there are governor limits in regards to DML, so the bigger the list, the more likely chance you'll run up against this. Here's a better way to do it. So first I'm going to have a, a list of opportunities, a list collection, um, and I'm going to just uh, leave it empty for now. And I'm going to iterate through that same op list as I did above. And this time uh, I'll still set the stage, but instead of doing the update right then and there within the for loop, I'm just going to add that single op from the list as we iterate through into a, another list. And at the end, when I exit my for loop, I'm just going to insert all the opportunities from that list. So this is a great way to avoid those governor limits. Now in regard to SQL queries, in this example you can see I have a SQL inside a for loop. And what this um, code is doing is first it's defining a list of accounts by selecting all accounts, right? And then it's iterating through that list of accounts and right here it sets a variable called number with email to zero. And then it's going to grab the contacts within each of those accounts. So I'm going to iterate through um, every contact within this account where the contact account ID equals the account ID here. So if you have obviously 10,000 accounts, you're going to run 10,000 SQL queries here. So this isn't really best practice uh, because we're bound to hit a governor limit. Instead, we can use a much more effective SQL query when we define our list to include another nested SQL query to grab the child contacts. So I basically do two SQL queries, this one and this one, and one here. And then when I iterate over the account, I am simply just looking at the contact children within this SQL query. So notice there's no SQL query 
nested in this for loop and it's a much more efficient way to do the same thing. The other principle is I want to keep logic out of triggers. So imagine if we had multiple developers working on automation for the same object. Things would get messy quickly and we can imagine having a very messy trigger. So instead we're going to utilize triggers only to control the execution of logic and place the code outside in separate Apex classes. So here's an example. Um, I have trigger, my account trigger, I'm running this before insert and before update. And for every account um, that is in this trigger context, I'm going to call here some static method in a class called account helper. And it has a method called set account owner. And I'm just going to pass the account in. So you see, rather than having a bunch of logic within my trigger, I'm just going to call a method from another class uh, to run my logic. And the last principle is bulkify. Um, so I want my Apex classes and triggers to be able to handle collections instead of just um, single records. And I want to bulkify always and consider the possibility of operating on multiple records at a time. So assuming that my code needs to handle more than just one. Um, we want to think, is the process I'm doing resource intensive? Do I risk hitting governor limits? And if so, we want to look at ways to bulkify our code. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please make sure to like and subscribe for more content.